Hey, what's up, YouTube? Luke, the window cleaner. Rihanna's back there. Hi. Sorry about the messy office studio. Uh, we just got back from a little vacation we took uh, for our three-year anniversary to Colorado Springs. Um, happy anniversary. I love you. <laughs> Um, so today we get a lot of questions asked about our uh, recording equipment, microphones and cameras and things like that, so I thought you'd just walk you through what we use. Um, show you. So first thing we use, this is the GoPro 5. This camera here is what we record 90% of our videos on. Um, the stand is actually a display that was taken from this camera, the Hero 3. The, uh, the stand, this is the most useful attachment that I use. It's really versatile. You can just set it anywhere, uh, add Velcro to the bottom so it can be used as a dash cam. But the great thing about the Hero 5, out of the box, it comes uh, waterproof. And that is a huge thing. And it's got the display on the back. So that's uh, it's our real go-to. The second most used camera is the Hero 3 Plus. This was my first camera. This is what I recorded all of my early videos on. Um, now it's really used for like a truck cam. So when we're doing a vlog or something like that, we're talking in the truck a lot. Um, we got this suction cup. Uh, attachment. It was suggested to me from uh, by Jordy over at the Window Cleanse. So anyways, we'll put this in the truck here, and this is what we do all of our, our truck videos on. This is kind of the box that I use uh, for work, so I load this up every day and take it with us with the, Go, with the GoPro 5. Um, in here I keep all of my attachments and things that we'll use for filming throughout the day. This uh, jaw clamp, and forgive me guys if I don't know all the technical names on this, again, I, I don't usually review video camera equipment, but um, this this attachment here is really useful. Uh, we may just put the GoPro on here and throw this on like a frame or wherever you're wanting to, even on one of your poles, but this is really versatile. This is probably my second most used attachment. Especially for water fed pole. Especially for water fed pole, because you can just clamp that right onto your water fed pole, adjust this however you want, and start filming. Um, my head mount, uh, this is how I get all of the first person shots. Uh, oh, and also, it's really important for the head mount to use wide angle lens. You use the wide angle uh, adjustment on the GoPro. Guys, this is the gimbal that I purchased for the GoPro. Um, this is kind of like a love-hate thing. That I thought it was going to be awesome, and it is awesome for like moving action shots and things like that. We used it in Belgium. Yeah, and the problem I noticed right away with using a gimbal, or at least this gimbal, which came, it has like the best uh, reviews online, and it is awesome. It works really great. The battery life is awesome, but the problem is, is with the sound. So you have to put the GoPro on like wind mode, where you where you hear the motor, because you don't hear the motor just using it, but when you start filming you hear the motor so that's kind of a Debbie Downer about that and I found that it kind of messes with the audio just a little bit but I still think that thing has a lot of use um this is called like a I think a, a large pole attachment actually or a large pipe attachment you'll see bicyclists use this um but we use this a lot of times on the trad pole what else anything else I use a whole lot here I carry an extra battery with me there should kinds be a mic in there. there a little mic yeah we use a uh mic for the truck cam because it'll pick because your GoPro will pick up a lot of audio from the truck this is a screen for the zero or for the uh, zero for the uh, GoPro 3 and then I always carry an extra battery with me as well um, that's about it that's what we take with us every single day to film and moving on to some of our like studio stuff here um, this is a Zen Hauser microphone this is my favorite microphone these are the microphones we use for podcasts the little disc here um these kind of keep the pop sound out even though you don't really need it for those microphones but anyways those are that's our podcast setup the yeti we use the yeti for like online interviews this is a much easier one to set up and kind of go with um i've also used this on all of my voiceovers 
The price difference between these two microphones is quite substantial. So if you're just wanting to do some voiceovers or whatever, I would highly recommend the Yeti. I think it's like 90 bucks, and this is a real versatile, uh, great sounding microphone. Um, what else were you going to Backdrop. Backdrop oh. was sent to us by Chris at Window Cleaning Resource, and I believe he got it from Steve at Outcast Printing. Yep. And so we've got one for our podcast that we've just been using for any, like, wider shots. And then we have one over here. It's a little darker because I don't have the light on it. Um, that's the one that we use if we're sitting in front of the computer and talking. It's a little lower. and it, Yeah, so both of those were from At Cost Printing. Awesome. We're actually going to order, I think, another one here soon. Um, more microphones. These are condenser microphones. We'll use these microphones here. Um, for like when you see us doing tool reviews in here now, we set these kind of out of frame, uh, but you get a much better quality sound. You don't get that echo that you're probably hearing right now too. These condenser microphones are really great for that. Um, our lighting, so it's just some it's like soft box lighting here. Uh, we'll set those up. We those were awesome, but it still is dark. Here, let me show you. And then this this is our favorite uh, lighting that we use now. I'll show you through. So there's Luke with the ring light. Hello. And then off is... Right down here. That's Luke without the ring light. It's a huge difference. Now, it might help if we had some other light bulbs in there that weren't like the yellow kind, but still, I mean, this is just like crazy difference. Yeah, it's way different. And then... Um... This was the package that was stolen from us when we got back. <laughs> yeah. And I would say this is the most versatile light that we use now, and that's really, you could probably just use the ring light and ditch these. So if you're buying lighting, these like are great. I'll turn the room lights off. You can't even hardly tell, especially uh, with all of these going. Yeah. If the only hard thing is looking in the camera still, that thing is on. Oh my gosh, it's so bright. Um, and then lastly, we've got our Nikon. I wish we could do more filming with that, because the quality that that camera produces is so superior to what we do with the GoPro. But the thing is, we're not going to take this to film window cleaning at a job or anything. So we only use that for filming in-house. And of course, just our, our tripod there as well. Now, all um, this stuff we did purchase ourselves. This is all stuff that we've... I don't know. This is all stuff that we purchased ourselves. And uh, yeah. if you take in consideration how much YouTube has paid us for the videos... It's not as much as all this stuff. It but the Nikon. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, uh, we're going to you know, use this stuff for our business mm -hmm. and Luke the Window Cleaner as well. And so it all kind of ties in and helps our business out. And it's fun. It's fun to use it and to get better with it and learn it. We're still learning how to use all of it more and more as we go. Um, oh, lastly, um, in fact, we're finishing a video right now. The software that I use to edit the videos is Adobe Premiere Pro. I used to use uh, Pinnacle, I think it's just Pinnacle, and Pinnacle is a great software, especially for a beginner. I always suggest that one to everybody. Oh, hang on, work. Good evening, thank you for calling Night Window Cleaning. This is Luke, how may I help you? Oh, okay. So, I was saying, uh, I always suggest uh, Pinnacle software because it's really easy to use. It's really affordable. I think 100 bucks, and you can buy the software. Adobe Premiere Pro is a little bit harder to navigate, but it gives you a lot more options on uh, like fine-tuning your edits and just it's it's light years ahead uh, or beyond uh, what you can do with the video in Premiere Pro. But it is more difficult to navigate, and it's about what's it cost? Like ten dollars a month. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, it's still really affordable. But. So, anyways, guys, I guess that's it for the studio. Just kind of a quick little video of, of what we use to record these videos and what we put into to making them. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Again, I'm sorry I'm not the most technical when it comes to all this video equipment and everything else. Just wanted to kind of show you guys how we uh, put it together. Mm -hmm. Shut up, Dad. All right, bye.